Hi everyone, I'm Shelly from There's No Place Like Home at redheadmom8.wordpress.com. Today I decided that I was going to share a little bit of truth with you about the public education system. And I know that some of you are probably thinking, again, she's going on about this again. But the thing is, is that I don't keep continue to talk about the public education system just because I hate it so much or because I have this vendetta about it. I talk about the public education system because I have been awakened to its true purpose and I have made it just my purpose in life to let as many parents as possible know what it's really all about. So today I'm going to talk to you about the hidden curriculum and the truth about public education. So some of you might already be aware that I have been doing a series on the hidden curriculum for my Patreon patrons, and I have been slowly releasing them um, onto my channel for everyone to see um, as time goes on. But I wanted to just go over just an overview of what the hidden curriculum isn't and what the hidden curriculum is because I know that if you're if you know who John Taylor Gatto is and if you have read any of his books you already know what the hidden curriculum is but I also know there are a lot of people who aren't really sure so rather than having rather than having you wait for all the rest of my videos to come out because I've only been releasing them one every month I thought that I would just give you a quick guide to what it's all about and then as I do release the more detailed videos about each specific characteristic of the hidden curriculum then you at least have an idea of what it is as you're going into it so first of all let's talk about what the hidden curriculum isn't the first time that I heard about it was in Dumbing Us Down, The Hidden Curriculum of Compulsory Schooling by John Taylor Gatto. And I remember as I was reading this, I thought to myself, but I wonder if this is really true. Could it be that he is just a disgruntled retired teacher and he wants to bash the education system so he decided to write this book? And what I found is that that is not true. So what the hidden curriculum is not, it is not a made up story by a disgruntled former teacher. The way that I actually found this out was I was talking to a family member who teaches at, well she used to teach at a community college nearby and I was just telling her everything that I was reading in this book about the hidden curriculum. And to my surprise, she told me that, yeah, she teaches about the hidden curriculum in her sociology class. And I was floored. And at the time, my oldest son, he had just started at another college. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to go look at his sociology book and see if it says anything about this. So I got my son's college textbook for sociology, looked in the index, Lo and behold, the hidden curriculum does have a section in his sociology book. Since then, I have had numerous teachers who have actually messaged me or come to me and told me that, yeah, they are taught about this when they are going to school for their teaching degrees. And a lot of them said that it didn't even click with them what it was all about as they were going through this in college. It was kind of just academic to them and they didn't realize the full repercussions of it until they became homeschooling parents. So that is what the hidden curriculum is not. It is not made up. So what the hidden curriculum is, is seven different focal points that are going to be instilled in public school students. And this is the main purpose of school in the first place. The main purpose of school is not the academic section. Yes, all schools have curriculums. Those curriculums though, those they're, they're just material, they're just superficial. Underlying those is this hidden curriculum and this is the true purpose of why schools are actually instituted and how they plan on doing the things that they want to do. So as I mentioned, there are seven different characteristics that the hidden curriculum is trying to instill in children. And I'm just going to go over each one with you and give you a brief, 
brief synopsis of what each one is. And then I'm going to link the, the videos that I have already released in the description box. And each month as I release a new video, I will also put that one in the description box as well. So the first thing that schools teach is confusion. Have you ever wondered why it is that schools teach things that are so completely unrelated? You know, kids a lot of times will have seven to eight periods in school throughout the day, and none of the classes that they are taking have anything to do with each other, you know? So they might start out their day in English class and then go to math and then go to an astronomy class and then from astronomy class they go to a Western Civilization class and then from Western Civilization class they might go to a parenting class and so on and so forth. There is no interconnectedness between anything that, that the schools are teaching kids. And there is a reason for that because they don't want kids to be able to make these connections. They, they want children, if you look at the way things are today, people who are making connections and who are, are able to figure things out for themselves, those are the people that are being censored. They are the people who are being deplatformed because these are the people who have broken out of this whole idea of not being able to put two and two together. And that whole process of not being, put, of not being able to put two and two together starts in the public school system and it starts on purpose. So the second thing that schools teach is class position. They teach kids that where they are in their class positions in school really defines who they are as human beings. So those who are up high, maybe in the gifted and honors classes, they're very often conditioned to look down on those students who are maybe in the special education department or in the lower tracks. Vice versa, the people in the special education or the lower tracks are taught that they are inferior to these kids who are in the upper classes and you know interestingly the more books that I read about education what I'm finding is that once a student is assigned whatever level whatever position they they are in in school it is very very hard for them to break out of it so if a student is assigned to be in the lowest level the lowest track of a school no matter how well they do they will very very rarely advance they, it just doesn't happen. These positions, they're, they're put in place in the very beginning and they usually stay where they're at. So the third thing that is taught in schools is indifference. And this is actually related to the, the first one, which was confusion. Because here we have kids who are being taught while they're in their 45 to 50 minute classes that they are supposed to give all of their attention and all of their energy to this one topic. And during this period of time, they are led to believe that this one subject area is the most important thing for them to be learning about and that they need to just focus and keep at it and be excited about it and be interested in it. But then the bell rings. And then students are expected to just drop everything and then just move along to the next class where they will start the same thing all over again. And what this teaches kids is that things don't really matter. Nothing really matters in the long run. They are taught that even if they're told that something is important, it really isn't. And that is a characteristic that a lot of the people, well, no, not a lot, that the people who are behind the institution of public education, they want people to have that characteristic. They want people to be indifferent. They want them to not care. And as you can see, it is all around us in the adult world. The next thing that the hidden curriculum teaches is emotional dependency. All of those report cards and those smiley face stickers and those red stars or sometimes those red Fs, they can really, really be horrible for a child's self-esteem or they can be fantastic for a child's self-esteem. But what a child learns through this emotional dependency is that they are placing all of their own self-worth on 
what their report card says or on what their teacher thinks of them. What did their teacher have to say about them on the report card? And you know, this is often taken into the home as well. Parents will look at those report cards. They will look at those smiley faces. They will look at those, you know, red A's or those red F's and they also will base what their own opinion of their child on these very things. So emotional dependency is another thing that, yes, they, they teach that in the hidden curriculum. They want kids to be emotionally dependent on their teachers, and they want them to be emotionally dependent on all of the report cards and all of the trappings that come with um, extrinsic, extrinsic rewards. The next thing that that is taught is intellectual dependency. So we just talked about emotional dependency. Now we're talking about intellectual dependency. They want kids to be at the point where they will always wait to be told what they should be learning next, that they should wait to be told what is important, and that they should wait for their teacher to tell them what it is that they're supposed to set out to do, what they should be researching, or what they should be memorizing. They do not want kids who are out there choosing the own things that their own things that they're learning about. And one of the biggest things in homeschooling is interest-led learning. And that is a no-no when it comes to the hidden curriculum because they want children to be intellectually dependent on their teachers. They don't want them learning things that are not considered safe for them to learn. So the sixth thing that is taught by the hidden curriculum is provisional self-esteem. And this really goes back to the emotional dependency that the kids have on their teachers. A child's self-esteem is very often um, developed in the way that they feel about themselves at school, how their teacher feels about them, how their classmates feel about them, where they are you know, on the social rung, where they are in their class positions, what their grades are. Children are taught that everything that is important about them has to be something that has to do with school. And you know, if you look at our society today, it is like this everywhere. Adults everywhere act as if the entire world of a child is just centered specifically on school. And that is exactly what the hidden curriculum wants. They want kids to develop their own identity based on what the school and everyone at the school thinks of them. And the last thing that I actually think is the most disturbing about the hidden curriculum is that one can't hide. Yeah, the last one is about surveillance. You wonder what all of that homework is about? The homework is actually put in place as a reminder to children and to parents that no matter what they are doing, the school is always there. Whether the parents have something that they want, had planned on doing with their kids, the school has to come first. Homework has to come first. Or whether it could even be something with the parents having to sign a paper saying that their child read that day. School always has to be looming in the background, even at home. And you know, not only that, in this book here, Dumbing Us Down, John, John Gatto actually talks about how children in schools are encouraged to tattle on their parents for the things that happen at home and parents at the parent-teacher conferences or maybe just by calling the counselors, they are encouraged to tattle on their own children. It, it is really about a constant state of surveillance. It's, it's almost like the big brother is watching you and this is, it's, it's like the same thing. School is always watching you. School is always on the background, in the background. Even when you're at home, you are never free from that education system. So again, I, I have already released the first three videos that are more detailed about what these lessons, lessons are in the hidden curriculum. So I will link the ones for confusion, class position, and indifference in the description box today. 
um, in a couple weeks, I will be releasing the one on emotional dependency. And then as I release the other three, I will continue to link them in the description box. So if you maybe want to bookmark this video and come back to it to see when I have the other ones released, if you're interested and want to hear more, you know, rather than just my brief synopsis that I gave to you today, you are welcome to come back and just watch those videos as well. But I hope that it has at least given you a little look into, you know, the, the, the dark side of the school system. It's not, and I've said this before, it is not the, the government trying to be philanthropic. It's not the government trying to, you know, be really great guys and like providing free education for all. It's not about that. It is about social conditioning. It is about social engineering and it has worked probably better than the people who designed it ever would have thought. Anyway, that's all that I have for you today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and would like to hear more of what I have to say, I would love if you would do that. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave one over on Instagram because YouTube has disabled my comments. I will leave the link for my Instagram page in the description box as well. And if you like my work and would like to check out my Patreon page and even see what, what you need to do in order to get the exclusive monthly videos, um, I will leave that link in the description box as well and I hope you have a great day.